Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon to all my dear students, honorable teachers, my colleagues, respected guardians. I hope all are well by the grace of Allah. My dear students, I have started a topic you know, in our last class. I tried my best to give you some hints and techniques uh, on how we can fill in the blanks in Kolos test successfully. So dear students, uh, before going to my lessons, I would like to tell you something first. In my last class, how much you have commented, inspiring me, really I am very much happy, thank you very much. And all my honorable teachers, my dear colleagues, uh, they have inspired me very much, especially I would like to mention Mr. Jyoti sir, Khoshidu Jaman sir, Zaki sir, how much you have inspired me, really, uh, I have been inspired for your uh, inspiring words. Thank you very much. So dear students, today our target, we will finish our discussion on nouns and in our next class, we will discuss on the another two parts of speech. So dear student, please today, you should take some pain and papers before you. Because today you should take some notes so that you can remember it afterwards when you will go to uh, uh, practice in your practice books. And uh, after, at the middle of my lectures, dear students, today uh, I will give you the answer of two questions what you asked me uh, in my last class. So dear students, let us go to uh, my lectures. Sorry, dear students, can you remember in my last lecture, I told you about it countable nouns and uncountable nouns. And uh, 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 so far I can remember, I gave you an example. Book is a countable noun and rice is an uncountable noun. And I told you that the, what are the characteristics of countable and uncountable noun. So, but again, my dear students, we remember what is our target. Our target is to, that means what is our focus point in the lecture. Noun is not our focus point. So dear students, we remember our focus point is Kulos test with or without Kulos, meaning how we can fill in the blank successfully, what are the techniques, that is our focus point. So just we will discuss what are the necessary to fill in the blanks. So here we will not go into the deep of the nouns. So dear students, for your uh, nice understanding, I have made a two column here. You know, totally we have countable nouns, concrete nouns, common nouns, collective nouns, uncountable, abstract, proper, and material nouns. So, dear students, I have made a two boundary, two column. So, countable, concrete, common, and man. Sorry, collective. These are the same categorized nouns. All the nouns have the same characteristics. So, if I please uh, take this name in your notebooks so that you can remember these four nouns, you must have to remember the name first countable, concrete, common, and collective. These four nouns have, have the same characteristics. Their uses in the sentence is the same what I told you in my last class about book. And again, these four nouns, uncountable, abstract, proper, and material nouns. They have the same types of uses in a sentence. So please, dear students, what I want to tell you, so these four nouns, countable, concrete, common, and collective, they have two forms. They have both singular and plural forms. This noun may be singular and may be another. For nouns, 
countable, abstract, proper, and material. They have only the singular form. They have no plural form. So, dear students, let us go ahead. Uh, what I was telling you in my last class, I was telling you A and the or S or ES. That is the factor. That means that is one of our techniques. How we can understand, uh, how I can fill in a gap successfully. So in a word, so please be careful. So concrete, countable noun means book, concrete here I have given only one example of every noun. But you know, you uh, have hundreds and thousands of examples like this. But just take the gist. So what at the countable, concrete, common and collective noun. These four nouns, when I will use them in a sentence, at the, then when it will be, they will be used in a sentence, it must take a, a or the or a or es before it. Sometimes, this type of noun can be attributed by an adjective. There are some adjectives. Some, you can write down a book. Uh, you may write many book, many books. So this type of some type of attribute adjective may comes before this noun. Without these, these nouns cannot be used in a sentence. Now we have to go there. So here, uncountable abstract, proper, and material noun, but these four nouns can be used in a sentence without taking a, what is, what will be my techniques? You know, <coughs> every body likes honesty. Everybody likes honesty. So it's a noun, no doubt. But I know this noun is an abstract noun. That means in this, uh, I think, in this uh, group, this noun. So we know it can be used in a sentence without a, m, da, s, or es. It. But when you will go, go use this type of nouns, you cannot use without a and or da or s or es. For example, I saw a man. So dear students, here man is a common noun. So I know a common noun cannot be used singly in a sentence. Then I have used it. I may use that or a yes, or yes, if it suggested. But here, I haven't used anything. Why? Because this is an abstract noun, I know. So it can be used alone singly in a sentence. So dear students, now what was our technique, what is our focusing point? Just when in a question paper I will see a gap here, then I can understand is a singular common noun, I must have to use A or M. But here, if I saw a dash here, I cannot see, I, I can understand, I cannot use A and B, S or ES before it. Then, I have to use another words. I can use here an adjective, but I cannot use them. So these are the techniques. So my dear students, I am repeating and repeating that, what is my target? What I want to tell you, what I want to give you the information, my information is, my focus point is, that means I will just take some techniques here so that I can fill in the blanks very successfully. So dear student, uh, let me share, so countable, concrete, common and collective nouns, just you have to remember that these pronouns, you will remember the name, when they will be used in a sentence, they cannot be used alone. They must be 
preceded by a and da is or is, but sometimes it may be attributed some adjective also. On the other hand, we have four nouns here, uncountable, abstra, proper, and material nouns. These four nouns, when I will use them in a sentence, it cannot take a and da is or is before it. So it will be my technique. What will be technique? When I will go to any context to fill in the blanks, then I can understand, oh yes, and it is an uncountable noun, so I cannot use a radical. Just this is my motto, what I want to tell you. So you have to remember this. So in a word, you should remember this four noun. If I use in a sentence, I must have to use a, m, d, or s, or s, or some adjective before it. But when I will use them, they cannot take a and the s or es before it. So they are students, but among these four nouns, we have something extra, uh, sorry, we have some extra rules. What should I say? That means these four nouns, I have already told you that when they will be used in a sentence, they cannot take a and the s or es. But this is not 100% true. Sometimes, the one exceptional rule is that you, you must have to remember that these four nouns, if they are attributed by an adjective before it, or if it becomes a specific in a sentence in any way, then you must have to use a da before these four types of nouns. So dear student, I hope you can understand my words. So, if these four nouns, when I will use them in a sentence, you must have to use A and D, S or E S before it. And these four nouns, when I will use them in a sentence, I will not use A and the S or E S. But one thing exceptional that when this noun will be used in a sentence, if we see that they have been attributed by an adjective before it, or it has become a specific in any way in a sentence, then it must take a da before it, otherwise it will not be right. So dear student, if I give you an example, then it will be clear to you. So what I will tell you, you tell that I like, I like honesty. So dear student, here, Honesty is an abstract now, so I have no need to use here. No need means I cannot use here because I know the characteristics. I know their characteristics that it cannot take any A and the S or ES before it. But one thing exceptional is if you tell that I do not like fake honesty. Fake honesty. So dear students, at the very beginning, at first sight, you may think that, oh yes, but this sentence is right. But unfortunately, this sentence is not right one. Because I know the characteristics of the noun, so I can understand this sentence is not right. So dear students, in my last class, you had a question like this, I will answer the question after finishing my lecture. So thank you. So I do not like fake honesty. So look here. This is an abstract noun and it is preceded by an adjective before it. As it has been activated by an adjective, I cannot write in this way. I do not like fake. My dear students, now when you will go to the context, if you see the behavior, then these my prior knowledge will tell me that, oh yes, honesty is an abstract noun and it is attributed by an adjective before it. So, without the, the sentence will not be right. So, I can use that. So, it will be my help. So, again, my dear student, be remember, I am not teaching you uh, with and without clues. That means we are sharing our ideas on the techniques how we can fill in the blanks in a contextual grammar very successfully. 
So just try to pick the techniques. So these techniques will tell me this. I must have to use the here. So dear students, I must have to summarize the uh, lecture here because you know our time is very much limited. So these pronouns, when we will use them, I bought a book. So dear student, now understand here when I wrote this sentence, I didn't use any article here, A, and or that, but when I am going to use a, make a sentence with a book, then automatically I have written A. Why? Because I know this categorical noun cannot be used in a sentence without A and the S or ES or some adjective before it. I, you cannot write, I bought book, or you cannot write, I, care, I bought books. This sentence, though you think that at the very big, very, very first time you may think that this sentence is right, but originally it is not right. So why not right? I am going to give you the summary. So dear students, here you may have a question to me, I know. What will be the question, sir? You have told that, that the countable noun, concrete noun, and common noun, and collective noun, they cannot be used alone in a sentence. In a sentence, we must have to give a and the, s or es or some uh, adjective, maybe a cumulative pig or it. So here, you may ask me a question, sir. So whether I have to use a or a or the, again, I am giving him a very nice hints to you so that you can understand, it will help you very much. So you know, I told you at the very beginning today that these four nouns has two forms, singular and plural forms. But these four nouns have only singular form. So now, dear students, take a techniques, a key points. If you see them in a sentence as a singular one, you may understand that, oh yes, as it has a sing it is a singular, it will take a or an before it. For example, a student, a student, a man, a boy. So, dear students, thank you very much. So here, these are the singular. Now, so I have used here A or N. You know E, A or N are the same thing, just it depends on the sound of a word. But dear students, if you see students, men, boy, you know this type of nouns. nouns have two types, I told you, sometimes singular, sometimes plural. So one techniques, if they become singular one, then I have to use a or n before it, but if they become the plural form, I must have to use that. So this statement will help you. When I will go to in the context, if I see the nouns are in the plural form, then I can use that. And if I see the nouns are in a singular form, then I can use yeah. But dear students, this formula has some exceptional. So this time I, I want to tell you this is 95% true. But all times you cannot use A or N before a singular uh, a common noun. Right? But if they are plural, this is 100%. If I see any four nouns in a sentence as a plural one, you must have to know, you must have to use a da, a da before it, or you must have to use some adjective before it. So, thank you, dear students. So, but these four nouns, one technique you must have to remember that these four nouns cannot take a, and or da before it. Uh, before it, but one thing, 
if they uh, be attributed by an adjective or if it become a specific in any other way, then it must have to take a da before it. So, dear students, from here, just you have to take two points. One thing, these are the nouns. It can, they cannot be used alone in a sentence. If they are used in a sentence, you must have to use a and the or s or yes before it. If the, a common noun or this type of nouns become singular one, you have to use a or n before it. And if they become the plural one, you must have to use that. Here in these cases, it, they are 95% true because they have some exceptional. And if they become plural, you must have to use that. And this is 100% true. But in the case of uncountable noun, if they become alone, then no A, M, B, or S by S can be used before it. But if they are attributed by an adjective before it, or if it becomes a specific in a sentence in any way, then you must have to use that. So, dear students, now we have to study on, I, I would like to finish here because now we have to know where a noun can be used in a sentence. So as I am going run out my time, so I have to do rapidly. So dear students, just take the points. Uh, a noun, a noun can be used as a so dear student, if you have pen and paper, just take the points very rapidly. Can be used as a subject of a verb. Object of a verb. And number three. Object of a preposition used as an apposition and it can be used as an complement. So dear students, we remember these are the five positions I have written here of a noun. When you will go to a context, when you will go to a context and if, if you see the gaps in these five positions, you must, uh, you will be sure that a noun must be used here. So dear students, I have written just five key positions of a noun here. The noun has some extra other uses in a sentence, but this file will help you to fill in the blanks. So I have to give you one example for every uh, every rules here, then you can understand it very easily. So here I have used, uh, written, a noun can be used as a subset of a verb. So dear students, suppose thy students Thy students are enjoying this online class. So dear students, here, who are enjoying? Thy students. So this is a subject of this sentence. So you have to understood that this is 100% now. So, dear student, one thing very much interesting. So, now you can understand why I have used here that. So, this is a plural common noun. Before it, I told you that this type of techniques will tell us many, many things in a context. So, this is a plural common noun, so I have used here that. So, if I get blanks here, I, have, I, I can understand it. Again, I will understand now there is a gap here in a context then you have to understood this position is for now, so I have to use now. The second position of 
reads a book. So dear students, so what the subject do here? He is reading or he reads a book, meaning this is an object. You know, so I have written here, noun can be object of a verb. So this position is for verb, no sorry, noun. So if I get a gap after going through my context, I can understand the here I have to use the noun. So dear student, again one thing very much interesting. Now I have to use here noun, I can and I, I have understood here by seeing this. But this E will tell me that I cannot use that four types of noun, abstract noun or collective, uh, sorry, uh, uncountable noun here. Yes, there is an A here, so I have to use common noun or countable noun, sorry, or collective noun, etc. So these techniques we must have to earn it before going to fill in the blank. So, dear students, I am feeling rushed to finish it, so I cannot tell in elaborately. Object of a preposition. So, dear student, look here. He lives in Dhaka. So, dear students, in this sentence, there is no object here, in, you know, but here the object of known these five categories. So, I know this is preposition. So, after it, this position is for noun. So, if I get any gaps here in my context, I must have to use a noun here. So, now an apposition. Dear students, I am extremely sorry, I know most of the students, you may have a question. Sir, I don't understand an apposition or complement clearly, but I am extremely sorry. Uh, I have no time today to give you uh, the answer of these two questions. If you have any questions, just you will give uh, comments, then in my next class I will tell you about apposition and complement. But just I am giving you two examples. My father, a doctor, my father, a doctor, is working in a hospital. So dear students, I know, I, I, I don't know whether you have understood the apposition or not, but just pick the points. So this is an apposition in a sentence. This position, apposition, it must be a noun. So I know the position. Now if you get any gap in after going to the context, in a sentence like this, here is the gap. Then I, as a student, I can understand, I must have to use a noun here. I cannot use any other parts of this piece here. So dear student, last point, I am going to give you another example. But you may have a question to me, so sir, we do not understand complement. But uh, for this, I, I need another session. Just I will give you an example, we made him captain. So, dear students, so this is an objective complement, you know, you know, we have two types of complements, subjective complements and objective complements, but I have mentioned here only complements, meaning subjective complement and objective complement both will be now. So, after going to the context, if I see that dash here, uh, dash here, then I can understand I must have to use a noun here. So dear student, I must have to finish here, but before that, uh, though, it is, though it is not an English book, just I am giving an example. We are discussing on Kolos test with and without Kolos. When you will enter into your practice book, you will see some passages here. You will see many, many contexts. In the context, if I see the dash or fill in the blanks, this high position, the subject of a bar, subject, object of a bar, or in an object of a preposition, 
or in the place of an association or in the position of an compliment, then we, we have to understand that I must have to use a noun in the gaps. So in this way, if we can learn the where I can use noun, where pronoun, where adjective, where adverb, where preposition, where conjunction, where interjection, what will happen there? Then any fill in the blanks, any context will be easy for us. So dear students, I have to finish now. So your uh, enjoying the class, your comments will inspire me more and I have hundreds of limitations you know uh, and, and my dear colleagues who are watching this I know as is still uh, taking online class is very new to me. So dear student, just try to pick the positive thing from here. If you get anything negative, please ignore it. So, dear students, in my next class, we will discuss on adjective and adverb. That means why we can use adjective and adverb after going to the context. So, until then, please keep safe and stay home. I would like to thank all my students who are watching this class. And if you have any question, please ask me in the comment box. And uh, dear students, please forgive me. I know I have hundreds of limitations in my presentation. I have limitation in the subject knowledge. I have limitation to give you the information because still I am trying to be a teacher, but still I cannot be a teacher for you. So just I am sharing my knowledge with you. So be with me and inspire me. And I would like to, at the end, I would like to uh, thank some of my beloved ex students who inspired me by uh, commenting very nicely and some of my uh, running students and my dear colleagues especially who are running uh, these online schools and I, I especially I would like to give thanks to the Rampur online schools especially to Koshidul Zaman sir, Jodish sir, Zakir sir and until then uh, and next time we will come to you with adjective adverb that is how we can use in the fill in the blanks until then Thank you. May Allah bless you all. Thank you very much.